Infection Palava. PDP renews move to replace Zamfara's Matawali. Some couple of days or weeks ago, it has been very challenging, but it's easy now. And uh, I, I, I think uh, the situation is getting better. It tells me that uh, the leadership of NNPC is working very hard. Fuel queues now shrinking as NNPC outlets and others sustain 24-hour operations. We are engaged in research to discover what are the real dynamics of these uh, insecurity. Also tonight, state governors, frontline security outfits, and stakeholders agree on inclusive security. Good evening. This is Senti Network News. Um, Cyril Stover in Abuja will be linking up with Hingino John Adams in Lagos in the course of this broadcast. And uh, just to remind you that uh, it's live on our website, nt.ng slash live, and on our YouTube channel, NT News Online. You can also visit Twitter handle at NT News Now, Facebook page, NT Network News, as well as Instagram, NTA Network. The Federal High Court in Abuja has fixed April the 8th for adoption of final addresses in a suit filed by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, seeking the removal of Zamfara State Governor Billo Matawali from office over his defection from the party to the All Progressives Congress, APC. The party is also seeking the sack of senators, House of Representatives members, and State House of Assembly members who decamped to the ruling party along with the governor. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and APC, which are also defendants in the suit, have joined the issues. Justice Nyangeko, who fixed the date after parties in the suit had completed the exchange of processes, said the stage is now set for definite hearing of all pending motions along with the substantive matter. Meanwhile, Ebony State Governor Chief David Umahi has restated his confidence in the Nigerian judiciary, stressing that he never disparaged the system. Governor Umahi stated this while playing host to the Forum of Ebony Founding Fathers, led by former Governor Martin Elechi at his office in Abakaliki. Following his sack from office by the Federal High Court Abuja for the campaign from the People's Democratic Party PDP to All Progressive Congress APC, Chief Omai has continued to receive solidarity from the people, appreciating Ebony founding fathers who visited him for the same purpose. Omai he said that he was not perturbed for any reason. He, however, debunked the allegation that he was castigating the judiciary. There is a judgment that is subsisted here in a bond state that says I can't vacate my office. There is a new judgment that says I should vacate my office. Why I appeal that of the one that says I should vacate my office, I will obey the one that says I will not vacate my office. I still have confidence in the judiciary. And I'm happy that uh, when I defected was the most trying period in Southeast. And I said, no, we need to move Southeast to the center and work with our brothers. While assuring Chief Umahi of their unflinching support, the leader of the forum and immediate past governor of the state, Chief Martin Elechi, advised him to seek legal redress and continue to be law abiding. We are angry with the pronouncement but we cannot translate our anger to violence. That would be unbecoming of democracy. So we come to say we are with you. What happened to you happened to all of us. But let us show maturity as if we go in an appeal. In Abakaliki, Chika Ukuri, NTA News. Still in politics, the acting chairman, Ketika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Governor Abubakar Bello of Niger State, has inaugurated chairmen and secretaries of sub-national convention committees for smooth and effective planning of the upcoming national convention of the party built to hold on the 26th of March. 
Governor Urwa Karbello says the heads of the subcommittees were selected based on their track records and experience to deliver. It is all hands on deck to ensure success of the forthcoming APC National Convention. A certain of these sub-national convention committees are now inaugurating the chairman and secretaries to take the lead. The acting chairman, caretaker extraordinary convention planning committee, Governor Abubakar Bello of Niger State is expecting nothing but a smooth run to success. Convention of members and secretaries of the committee is in consideration of track records, experience, and loyalty to the party. It is expected that they exhibit these qualities and to ensure the success of the convention. Governor of Kiti State, Kayode Fayemi, on behalf of members of the subcommittees, express commitment to bring their experience and wisdom to bear as they look forward to strengthen the party to maintain its leadership position in the country. It is clearly one that we want to commit all our strength and wisdom to accomplish so that our party can be properly positioned. This party should, as a matter of urgency, to respect the rule of law and obey the court judgments and orders where they exist. And when this is done, it will also give everyone a sense of belonging. The subcommittee's chairman are expected to coordinate selection of people that will make up the remaining members and submit to the party secretariat. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. Moving on to governance and security, we hear that the Niger Governors Forum is strengthening support with frontline organizations in containing incidents of unrest that threaten the corporate existence of the country. The collaboration was reached at a multi-stakeholders engagement on peace and inclusive security in Nigeria. Abubakar Akwanga reports. Peace and security of any nation are seen as not negotiable and its sovereignty should not be left in the hands of those who compromise the law. This is what the Nigerian Governors Forum stands to defend with support from Center for Democratic Development and the British High Commission. The forum supports any effort to create a more inclusive and collaborative platform to mobilize an immediate and comprehensive national response to our country's security challenges. We talk based in the spirit of partnership and we discuss strengthening our cooperation in a wide range of areas, you know, including, for example, on policing, on maritime security, various other areas as well. At the panel to forge security discussion, state actors shared experiences on the nature of Nigerian crisis and ways to tackle its consequences through effective synergy. We are engaged in research to discover what are the real dynamics of these uh, insecurity. We are willing and we are open to deepen this level of collaboration and to see how we can provide you know, uh, stakeholder intervention at the highest level of government. The expectations for these like minds is to devise ways of developing a roadmap towards ending avoidable carnage and entrenching an era of stability and national cohesion. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NT News. The 2022 World Kidney Day is throwing up the imperatives for maintaining kidney health with focus on education and creating increased awareness. NTA was practically co-opted into this year's celebration, both as content creator and beneficiary, with staff at the headquarters in Abuja getting free kidney counseling, screening and testing, courtesy of the Wuse District Hospital, Abuja. Joseph Otsen reports. A busy schedule may not allow a highly engaged staff, like that of the Nigerian Television Authority, to carry out routine medical checkup that will help early detection of disease for prevention. With this year's World Kidney Day focusing on bridging gaps to improve kidney health, the Wusa District Hospital, Abuja, takes the awareness campaign to the doorsteps of NTA. Our kind of lifestyle, we usually don't have 
time for our bodies. So I was like, okay, passing through all the stages, I was kind of agitated. But I'm so happy it came out positive. And from the counseling, I've been advised, you know, to live a more positive lifestyle. A kidney is a vital organ in the body that filters blood and helps in passing out waste as urine. Its inability to function effectively can lead to health complication and even death. Health is wealth, like they said, health is wealth. So anywhere I see any medical screening, I don't hesitate to join. One out of every adult worldwide and over 20 million Nigerians are said to have kidney-related diseases. And this NTA staff don't want to be counted among. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. And to speak more on this year's World Kidney Day, Dr. Olati Shiolalika, consultant nephrologist, Zenith Medical and Kidney Center Abuja, joins me via Zoom. Uh, Dr. Olalika, thanks for joining us on Network News. Yeah, my pleasure. Right. Thank you when for having say, me. When we say kidney disease-related mortality continues to increase worldwide uh, with a projection of uh, uh, becoming the fifth leading cause of uh, death by 2040, um, what's the current incident ratio in Nigeria and how critical is early detection to prevent morbidity and mortality? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, well, every year, um, the second, precisely the second um, um, Thursday of the month of March, we celebrate the World Kidney Day. And um, that started in 2006. And then the whole idea is to um, sensitize um, the populace to let them know that, look, this disease it needs all our attention not just um, um, the patients, but the, even the policy makers. Everyone needs to be aware that the, the prevalence of the disease is on the rise. And uh, is, at the moment, it's threatening to get to an epidemic uh, proportion. So everyone needs to understand what he needs to do to take care, uh, look after his kidneys. And so this year's team, kidney, uh, what the World Kidney Day, we talk about the kidney health for everybody, for everyone. And so it's important to know that um, the privilege is on the rise. One out of 10 people suffer from, of one out of 10 adults suffer from kidney disease worldwide. Okay. The, the institution and, and, is not different no, in Nigeria. How can early detection help in mitigating this? Oh, yes. Um, when we detect early, we are able to um, put down measures to reduce, uh, to slow down the progression of the disease and sometimes to completely halt the progression through a lot of ways, starting with lifestyle modification. We, when we pick these things and lifestyle, we ask people who smoke to stop smoking. Then they need to exercise, they need to drink water, they need to eat healthy diet, you know. He, the, a diet that was very quite rich with um, uh, fruits and vegetables. And so right. when we pick the disease early, we are able to, if, 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 if we know that worldwide hypertension and diabetes are the two leading causes of the disease. And so um, blood pressure is picked early, then medications are given to such patients and uh, to control their blood pressure. That way we hold the progression of the disease. All right, just, just quickly, how can we better existing structures? Uh, um, in closing the knowledge gap? That's a long way to go, especially talking about um, where we policymakers have a role. Right now, everyone is concentrating on the on four non-complicable diseases. We, they are concentrating on diabetes, cancers, chronic respiratory um, uh, diseases, and so, um, even among policymakers, it's not top on the list. So there is a need to educate policymakers. Even the health workers, the physicians, also need to be educated so that we can narrow down and close the gap in terms of knowledge. And uh, that will include what we are doing today, letting people know uh, the various uh, causes of the disease and how to 
prevent uh, the disease. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Latishi Olaliko, consultant, nephrologist, uh, Zenith Medical and Kidney Center, Abuja. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We'll take our first break now. The news will continue shortly. Plus Plus is here. Existing Glow customers will get 400% bonus on every recharge and 100 MB data bonus on first recharge of the month. New Glow customers will get 1,000 Nara welcome bonus. To activate, buy a new Glow SIM today or dial star triple seven hash for existing Glow customers. The Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Issa Ali Ibrahim Pantami, invites all government agencies, security organizations, diplomatic corps, corporate and private organizations that use radio frequency spectrum licensed by the ministry and all users and vendors of walkie-talkies to the Federal Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy's two-day radio frequency monitoring week. Date, 14th March 2022. Red show at Alaba International Market and Environs, Lagos. 15th March 2022, Stakeholders Forum with the theme, Effective Approaches to Radio Frequency Spectrum Monitoring. Venue, Digital Bridge Institute, former old NITEL Training School, Osho de Lagos. For inquiries, call 0803-438-0296. For remote participation, visit www.comtech.gov.ng. Announcer, A.A. Ladan for Permanent Secretary. The Zenith Better Life promo is back, and it's bigger and better. You could be one of 20 lucky customers to win 150,000 Naira every two weeks from now till January 31st, 2023. To qualify, simply open a Zenith Bank account and maintain a minimum balance of 5,000 Naira. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Get Data Unlimited to experience Dance Unlimited on Glow TV. Watch Battle of the Year and other amazing TV content with Glow TV data plans that will make you dance. Dial star 777 hash to choose the right data plan for you. Excellency, yes, um, is our wiki, C O N G S S R S, the POS Africa, Governor of River State, cordially invites the general public to the commissioning of gunboats at NMS Pathfinders, Naval Base, Rumelimeni, River State. The high speed and versatile patrol gunboats will be donated by Governor, yes, um, is our wiki to the Nigerian Navy to further strengthen its operational capacity and efficiency. Vice Admiral Awal Zubelu Gambo. 
gunboat. Chief of Naval Staff will commission the gunboats on Friday, 11th March 2022, time 11 a.m. All invitees must adhere to COVID-19 protocol, including wearing of face mask. You welcome all invited guests. Announcer, Kelvin Ibiri, Special Assistant on Media to the River State Governor. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us, and you can follow this broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, on YouTube channel, NTA News Online, and uh, you can also visit the Twitter handle at NTA News Now, Facebook page, NTA Network News, Instagram, NTA Network. The military says it will, it will up its kinetic operations in a bid to eliminate all terrorists in the country. Except they surrender. Director, Gen Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Bernard Oyuku, reaffirmed the military's position at a news conference in Abuja. Another Thursday, time to give account. And the Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Bernard Oyuku, is here again. Top on the success list is the troops' engagement of ISAP fighters in several locations, including the Mandara Mountains in the northeast. It is a similar tale in the fight against bandits in the northwest, but efforts were dampened by Tuesday's attack on the deputy governor of Kebbi State and his entourage. Notably, own troops during robust clearance operation engaged Islamic State West African pro terrorists at the Mandara Mountains and Tibaktu Triangle during the encounter. Ten terrorists were neutralized. The troops recovered four anti-aircraft guns, over 2,000 rounds of 12.67 millimeter ammunition, 10 bicycles, one unexploded improvised explosive device. Referring to a recent documentary in which a bandit kingpin, Belo Turji, justified why he went into banditry, Major General Onyeko says, it is not the role of the armed forces to negotiate a truce. We are not in the business of negotiating peace with uh, bandits or terrorists. Our business is to take them out. At the end of the day, the military continues to balance between its kinetic and non-kinetic approaches in curbing security challenges. In the meantime, the NTA is saying it will not relent in its support for the Nigerian military in the defense of the nation's territorial integrity. This came to four when NTA Director General Yakubu Ibn Mohammed received the newly appointed Director of Defense Information and another group, Vanguard for Nigeria's Salvage in Abuja. Charles Alpha report. Appointed in January this year as the Director of Defense Information, Major General Jimmy Akko acknowledged the important role that media play in promoting the constitutional mandate of manning and maintaining peace and security of the nation. The Major and other officers were in NTA to consolidate the robust partnership that has existed between the armed forces and NTA over the years. I have just come to seek for uh, greater support uh, in managing the image and projecting the image of uh, the armed forces of Nigeria. Standing in the gap for the DG, NTA was the director of special duties, Malam Lawa Umar. He said NTA has long been showcasing the day-to-day -day activities of the armed forces and will continue to do so. So we want to assure you that NTA will continue to partner with you so that you succeed and is our country a rid of, of insecurity. In another visit, the Director General Yakub Ibn Mohammed, represented by the GM NTA News 24, Fatima Abbas Hassan, granted audience to a female presidential aspirant, Vivian Ibele Bello, of the Vanguard for Nigeria Salvage, who said she has identified some gaps in the participation of women in politics, education, health, and tourism, and wants NTA to support her cause through reorientation of women. Um, NTA has been great in terms of um, gender reporting, but we will still um, appeal that they up the ante, you know, give us more space, in, uh, especially in political issues that have to do with political participation. We provide a level playing ground, so all aspirants, for as long as you have indicated interest, 
rest assured that you have the opportunity to be seen and heard on the NTA. Charles Alpha, NT News. And the need for a multi-sectoral approach and building local capacity to respond to emerging crises in West Africa dominated discussions at the first West Africa Peace and Security Innovation Forum. President ECOWAS Commission Jean Cassibro, in his remarks, harped on strategic regional engagement in mapping out effective responses to challenges. Joseph Otsen reports that the two-day virtual meeting is organized by the ECOWAS Commission. The initiative, therefore, is a welcome development that will bolster the current peace and security architecture in, Af in West Africa through further research and engagement. And Virtually, key actors discuss impact of COVID-19 on already vulnerable health, security, and citizens in West Africa. We have the chance here to build bridges between the disciplinary silos around public health and human security and to learn from each other for more comprehensive interventions. Sessions explore approaches and lessons learned from managing peace and security matters amidst the pandemic with resource persons advancing building capacity and leveraging on technology to reach citizens with right responses in dealing with crisis. The question is how can we now rise up to, the, 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 to this opportunity and begin to use the technology that we have available to us uh, to uh, extend peace building, whether it's through early warning, uh, whether it's through responses or whether it's through uh, mediation to make sure that we can actually build peace or even um, countering harmful narratives that can be spread through social media platforms. The two days forum dwells on the team the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on human security and governance in the ECOWAS region. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. The House of Representatives has in line with the policy of ease of doing business commenced legislative consideration of a bill that seeks to enhance operations and performance of the capital market. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that this bill passed second reading during today's plenary. Since the global financial crisis of 2019, ideas and initiatives are being put in place to boost investors' confidence in the management of financial securities. Sponsor of the bill seeking to repeal the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers and have in its place the Chartered Institute of Securities and Investments, Babangida Ibrahim says, seeks to enhance performance and sanitize operations. The security and investment is more encompassing, taking into consideration the different segments of the responsibility of the stock exchange that are now being carried out by different specialists. Also passed at second reading is a bill to establish National Public Safety Board from Jonathan Gaza and the bill to establish National Center for Research and Production of Snake Vaccines in Kotungugumbe State, sponsored by Carol Simon Elisha. The House has adopted a motion urging authorities to take steps towards curbing security breaches in parts of Benue State. In another development, the House has engaged key stakeholders on the rising cost of aviation fuel in the country in view of implications to the sector. One year ago, it was selling at 190 naira per litre, and as of this afternoon, sir, it was going for 670 naira per litre. It has increased the cost of uh, operations, of airline operations. The cost of operations, fuel will take 30% of any airline all over the world. Here in Nigeria, the cost of aviation fuel is about 70% even before this increase. In Nigeria, these market forces, in the morning, what you buy is not what you buy at 12 noon. As friends in the market, all right, honorable speaker today, no one knows what the price will be tomorrow. What traders will typically do is to make sure that they have, they have enough cash in their hands for them to be able to go back to the market to buy the next stock. This may be where it is coming from, but that's still not an excuse for escalation of prices. Uh, I'm sure they uh, will work with the authority to make sure that if there is any such thing, we'll, we'll deal with it uh, jointly as an industry. We have sufficient deposit in the country that can take care. We should be concerned as to why we're having the deposits. If your landing cost is about 430, why are we selling at 700? Why is, 
why are we saying that? That's, 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 that's the thing. More investigation will be done as to the, the, the reality of what on ground. The meeting went into closed door from the National Assembly, Lamia Ali, NTA News. The National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDDA, is partnering the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, to provide a platform where young persons with innovative startups will be groomed and assisted in translating technological ideas and innovations into marketable products and services. The focus is on health, finance, and agriculture. Chim Binman Dubisi was at the launch of the Technological Hub and now reports. Have uh, Nigerians in diaspora actually get their character report rather than going to the embassy pushing on uh, uh, applications for the reports we're going to use hashing and then uh, metadata management to, to gather up this document and then validate. This idea by 30-year-old Ela is no longer going to be just an imagination or a dream but a marketable application. Well, that will be after he undergoes a five-month tech training at the National Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics. He's not alone. Actually, eight out of more than 5,000 participants have been selected to kickstart the first phase of IHATCH startup incubation program with focus on health, agriculture, and finance. This initiative, Idea Hatch, named IHATCH, is crafted and designed to identify promising startups with promising ideas and let them turn their ideas into products and services. The National Information and Technology Development Agency, NITDA, is providing the platform, while Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, is providing technical support. And uh, will inspire uh, the Nigerian youth yeah, to brush up uh, their business uh, ideas uh, and maximize opportunity for empowerment. Selection is also mainly based on the ideas, like how scalable, how profitable, and how, how much impact, social impact, the idea has on the society. The second phase is expected to start in the next six months to capture other states into the program. In Abuja, Chimdima Idbisi, NTA News. And it's time to link up with Hingino in Lagos for more reports. Hingino. Thank you, Cyril. Making the Bible accessible to all through translation into various local languages will give many Nigerians the opportunity to derive the benefits of salvation. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, said this at a Christian Leadership Summit in Lagos organized by the Bible Society of Nigeria. It is a gathering of Christian leaders from all states of the Federation under the auspices of the Bible Society of Nigeria. They are here to share experiences and ideas to move the gospel forward. One of such is Bible translation into various Nigerian languages. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, who commended the society for translating the full Bible into 26 Nigerian languages, said, now is the time for all to translate their faith to enhancing national peace and unity. That those who want to be considered great must be prepared to be servants of, of the book. For uh, the scripture goes on to say, for even as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Reaching out to those in the hinterland, the vice president believes will have great impact on not only individuals, but the nation. Most people do not have the Bible in their local languages. More than half of these languages have not had a single verse of scripture uh, in their own language or translated into their own language. And this automatically places the scriptures out of the reach of a large percentage of Nigerians who do not possess formal education. It was also an avenue for BSN to appreciate the contributions of the vice president to the propagation of the Bible, and former Vice President Olusegun Obasanjo presented the symbol of appreciation. So Professor Yemi and Mrs. Dolapo Shibajo, GCOM, 
This is special membership. Outstanding services is awarded to you. The theme for the meeting, the Holy Bible, our reliable foundation for maximizing personal and national well-being is regarded by participants as an effective tool in accelerating the Nigerian Peace Project. Why the Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service is aggressively confronting smuggling activities is due to the simple reason that illicit trade is the propelling factor for the multiplication of other vices apart from threatening national economy. This battle, the acting controller of the unit, Hussein Ejibunu, noted will be won if information sharing is prioritized. He was speaking at the display of seizures in Lagos, which also included more than 30,000 liters of petrol. Michael Olale reports. While Nigerians were sweating it out to get just a drop of petrol, smugglers were busy exporting the little in circulation. These 36,575 liters are parts of what the Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service could intercept. But the worry here transcends the smuggling of the commodity, but the huge loss is incurred by government at a time payment of subsidy is becoming challenging. We will set up proper anti bunkly units within the Zone A of FOU. That they, they will not do any other job aside tracing fuel smugglers. The customs has long ushered the fuel publicly and together with a sum of money accrued from the transfer of value, recoveries of low transfer and wrong classification generated close to 80 million naira in revenue between 3rd and 28th February 2022. This police truck was equally intercepted at Idesi in Ogu State with more than 400 bags of foreign rice. But the driver is at large. This, however, is just a fraction of the close to 7,000 bags of foreign rice seized within the period under review. In contrast to January 2022, there seems to be a downward trend in the smuggling of rice, but increase in the number of rules and the importation methods employed by smugglers are generating new surveillance approach. With the effort of my officers in ensuring that all the routes and all the corners are properly policed. So it brought that reduction from 9,000 to 6,000. 52 used fridges and 175 pieces of compressors, including used tires and clothing, with the duty paid value of goods seized within February, close to 590 million naira. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Time now for our second commercial break, but don't forget, you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now, and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. I have taken my own What about you? We have taken our own What about you? I am strong and healthy What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? We are strong and healthy What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Go get, go get, go get Go and get your job The hospitals, churches and the mosques Go and get your job Health centers, hurry up now this message is brought to you by the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, NPHCDA. Share with Dow Star One for One Hash Now. 
Cartel, the smartphone network. No more get a bag. Enjoy cargo tofu, classified with vital rich plus iron. What a lovely coffee. Thank you very much, ma. How can I help you? My madam here wants us to change our mattress. She says it is too firm. It is, oh, very uncomfortable. But I like the mattress. You're always complaining of backache. I'm not even going to my side. Oh, no. Don't you worry. I have the right looker for you. Oh. Come with me. Mondio Plus mm. is a spring mattress with a comfort layer. It is made with superior vernier technology, which ensures the spring core doesn't poke through. You will both enjoy it. Ah. Hey, babe. Hmm? But you're still going to massage my back here. <laughs> Thank you for the rejections. That taught me to keep striving. Thank you for the long hours. That taught me discipline. Thank you for the knockdowns. That taught me to bounce back. And for the unexpected victories. That taught me to never give up. Thank you for making me who I am. If you've been called to host the game show, it's only right to know how it's played. is constant. Bang. Win some and lose some. But you can make it a motivation to win the next challenge. You have to be fast. And always be right. But nonetheless, you will have Saturdays only on African Magic Auburn and Family. Liverpool look to keep up the pressure on Manchester City when they take on Brighton. Who are still smarting from a loss to Newcastle United. This Saturday, it's Brighton and Hove Albion versus Liverpool on the Premier League line, showing on the network service of the NTA from 1 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Bye Jebu, empowered by Integral. Back in Abuja, time to do business with Benny. Thank you and welcome to Business. I'll start by telling you that the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association and the Industrial Training Fund and its Technical Skills Development Project have gone into partnership with 30 organizations to promote technical and vocational skills to meet identified needs of industries. supported 59 participating organizations and technical colleges with machinery and technical equipment. <laughs> it has also graduated so far 54,603 highly skilled technicians who are either employed in corporate organizations or have become entrepreneurs that are also employing others. And to energy matters, oil prices rose on Thursday following a sharp drop in the previous session as the market contemplated whether major producers would boost supply to help plug the gap in output from Russia due to sanctions for its invasion of Ukraine. If we mitigate, how do we uh, uh, overcome uh, this crisis.
Brent crude futures were up 1.7% at $113.02 per barrel. The benchmark contract slumped 13% in the previous session in its biggest one-day drop in nearly two years. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures were at $109.80 per barrel for a gain of 1%. The contract had tumbled 12.5% in the previous session in the biggest daily decline since November. Uncertainty over where and when supply will come from to replace crude from the world's second largest exporter, Russia, in a tight market has led to wide-ranging forecasts for oil prices between $100 and $200 a barrel. And taking a look at the market, investors gain 41.44 billion naira as the all-share index inched up by 0.16% to close at 47,363.98 basis points against 0.28% appreciation recorded previously. Market capitalization stood at 25.5 trillion naira as 261.5 million shares worth 4.4 billion naira were traded in 4,672 deals. Reed Briscoe led 21 gainers as against 12 losers, topped by Royal X at the end of today's session. Qtex, Axis, and FCMB led the activity chart, just as MTN Nigeria and Presco topped the market value list. That is a business news. Syria, it was over to you. Thank you, Benny. Now, motorists in Abuja and other affected parts of the country may presently be seeing an end to the long and persistent queues at petrol filling stations, which have lasted for weeks. This may be connected to the 24-hour operations currently in force by 48 NNPC petrol stations in Abuja and others also working round the clock to ensure uninterrupted access to petroleum products by motorists. Lydia Samson reports that motorists are definitely taking advantage of uh, the opportunity. Some of the stations indicate that the process is seamless with few motorists. It is 12 a.m. Late as it is for motorists here, taking advantage of the 24 hours of service, they agree, is a unique way of accessing petrol without having to wait. But I thank God this evening, as I just enter, and, and I'm amazed that NMPC is actually selling fuel by this time. And we got here, and there's no queue, nobody, and we just got a man that is nice. It's nice. I'm really impressed by this. You can see everywhere is empty now. The, there is no more queue again. People are getting the products, and it's available. So they are getting the product as much as they want. Uh, since we are operating 24 hours, you can come in anytime you like. If you don't want to come in the daytime, you can come in at night and pick your products. The tour of petrol stations by journalists went on till 3 a.m. And most stations listed had good reports of motorists applauding the 24 hours window. This is uh, quite commendable and impressive. Some couple of days or weeks ago, it has been very challenging, but it's easy now. And uh, I, I, I think uh, the situation is getting better. It tells me that uh, the leadership of NMPC is working very hard. Some of the petrol stations, though the stations were open and waiting to serve, but no vehicles showed up. They, however, said the 24-hour service is mandatory as part of collaboration with the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to mitigate queues, which are already giving way. The motorists applauded the NMPC Limited for the 24-hour service in the designated petrol stations, as well as massive distribution of products across the country. In Abuja, Lydia Sams, NTA News. Still caught up in the euphoria of this year's International Women's Day celebration, the Development Bank of Nigeria has rolled out several programs to boost the financial base and capital of female entrepreneurs. Ngozi Technicu reports. Vice we, we also do have that where we can help you structure your business. To break the bias of gender disparity, the Development Bank of Nigeria is aligning with this year's theme of International Women's Day celebration by bringing together technocrats, chief executives, entrepreneurs, most of whom are women, playing active roles in the nation's micro, small, and medium enterprises, MSMEs with over 41.5 million MSMEs in Nigeria, contributing more than 50% to the gross domestic product, access to credit becomes the needed catalyst for further growth. 
Investing in women will make up over 40% of the nation's population, DBN say, is key to the growth of the economy. Some of these self-imposed biases themselves, they have to overcome them. The advice for them that the women opportunities are wide are open there. The potentials are huge. Nobody should stop them. Nothing should stop them because they can also do, if not even do better than men. There are no biases that should be able to hold you down. And I tell people, if I can, you can also. With mentorship such as these, the future looks bright for the women folk. There's potential in women. And we must all come together to harness that potential and unleash that potential into building this country, Nigeria. By the lady mechanic, we empower women to be skillful female mechanic. Women, please come out of your comfort zone, please. You can be so great. You can do more than you ever think you can do. Based on records by the Development Bank of Nigeria, over 100,000 MSMEs have so far benefited from their credit facilities and still reaching out to more women That's in the so business thank sector. You, thank you so Ngozi much. Technikyo, NT News. As come down to the 35th edition of the National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFIST begins, the Director General of the National Council of Arts and Culture, Ulu Shagumushiwi, says cultural diplomacy is one major way of achieving development in the country. He made this known when he received the Lagos delegation hosting this year's festival. Oyin Naya Kaluoka reports. In order to foster unity after the Civil War in 1970, the National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFES, was introduced. Lagos, which was the first state to host the festival, is hosting the 35th edition. We are ready for this event and we are warming up to receive the nation. Lagos, as we all are aware of, is the state of excellency and want to put the excellence that we are known with into this festival that we are to host. We are going to have pre nafes several days before your arrival, where all the local government in Lagos State will showcase the Director General, National Council for Arts and Culture, Olushe Buroshewe, says the festival is an opportunity for states to showcase their cultural strengths and also promote unity. He tax Lagos State to put in their best for a repackaged festival. The beauty of NAFIS is to unite this country. It's bringing us together. We are going to have about 5,000 delegates from all over the country coming. The 35th edition of NAFES 2022 um, has Lagos State Governor's wife named as Mama NAFES. Oyinaya Kalu Oka, NTA News. Time for another break. Stay with us. As the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring suffering. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being a bold boy, by being civil, patriotic, and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message.
message from the National Orientation Agency. Liverpool look to keep up the pressure on Manchester City when they take on Brighton, who are still smarting from a loss to Newcastle United. This Saturday, it's Brighton and Hove Albion versus Liverpool on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 1pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Bye Jebu, empowered by Integral. Thanks for staying with us. President Muhammadu Buhari has sympathized with Eze Isiala I of Iseketa Ancient Kingdom, His Royal Majesty Eze Elder Nelson Merengwa, on the passage of his mother, Chief Mrs. Comfort Merengwa Ma. The president says at age 105, Ma can be said to have lived a glorious life crowned with longevity but that no matter how long they live and how well, most people never want to see their mothers leave. President Buhari said mothers are from heaven and that Uma has only returned home, urging Eze Merengwa and members of the ancient kingdom in Abia State to take solace in the quality of life lived by the departed and the legacy she left behind. And that concludes Network News tonight. Just remember to be part of the fight against rape and rapists. Join the NTA. I'm Cyril Stover. Good night.